ladies and gentlemen, evictions are just going through the roof in America. It really is no joke for a lot of people out here. And the evictions are at crisis level, you know, because affordable housing is almost non-existent in America and the situation is getting worse. And we know it's not going to get better anytime soon. I have some audio that I want you to listen to from NPR. Weeks after flooding. Hey, NPR, tap the play button to hear from StoryCorps with a love story between twin waitresses and twin musicians. Support for StoryCorps comes from Subaru, featuring the 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness, equipped with all-terrain capability. Discover more at Subaru.com wilderness. A majority of Americans say a lack of affordable housing is a serious problem where they live. And as prices keep rising, Black and Hispanic renters are struggling the most, including with the threat of eviction. Those are some of the findings in a new poll by NPR and Harvard University. NPR's Jennifer Lutton reports. Even before she lost her job this past spring, things were tight for Nikki Cox. She works in customer service in North Carolina and had been making $20 an hour. Half her income went to rent. Um, normally, if I didn't have something left over, it might be about 100 maybe. And that would buy my groceries and my necessities. Cox is among a majority of Black and Latino households who say they don't have enough savings to cover one month of expenses. That's according to the survey by NPR, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. It left Cox in trouble when her company lost business and her hours were cut. She switched to a temp job, but that only paid $15 an hour, a huge drop in income. Then in May, she got COVID. She was out of work for three weeks, unpaid. At one point, Cox relied on customer points at convenience stores to get free dinners. Her nephew also helped. If he knew that I didn't have anything, he would send me like $10, 15 But I mean, 10 or $15 in groceries doesn't last because you really can't get anything. Her landlord was understanding, but eventually set a deadline. She said, if you can't get me at least $1,600, I'm going to have to go ahead and start the eviction process. The new poll finds eviction rates are basically back to pre-pandemic levels. And many more people say they faced the threat of eviction. Both rates are highest for black households, which have lower income and less wealth than white ones. Peter Hepburn of Princeton University's eviction lab says on one hand, it's good that racial disparity didn't get worse, but it's also disappointing it didn't shrink given all the emergency help. A lot has changed in the last two plus years, right? And there was the real possibility that some of those dynamics would have shifted. And that really, you know, time and again, every time we've looked at the numbers has not been the case. He says one reason is that state pandemic policies around evictions were wildly uneven. Where you lived had a really profound impact on how well you were protected from eviction. That was true well before the pandemic, and that divide seems to be getting wider. Since her eviction threat, Cox has had good news. She found a local nonprofit to help with rent and a new job at her old pay, so she's grateful she can stay put. She had applied for housing subsidies a few years ago, but never heard back. They are chronically underfunded. Only one in four who qualify get them. Now, skyrocketing rent and home prices are making it even harder to use them. In Lexington, Kentucky, Davida Gatewood was doing fine paying her share of the rent, but then her landlord said he would not renew the lease. He wants to renovate and sell the property, which is happening to a lot of people right now. Just landlords wanting to go on and take advantage of the housing market, but the problem is we have nowhere to go. Gatewood's a single mother of six. After the lease wasn't renewed, her Section 8 payments stopped. She's been fighting eviction while looking for another place for seven months. Prices are hundreds of dollars a month higher. The market's so tight, places are snapped up fast. Plus, you think you found something, and then at the bottom of it, it says, in bold, no Section 8. So that's extremely discouraging. The country has a massive shortage of affordable housing. The Biden administration is encouraging communities to build more and more densely to help bring down rents. But that's not enough, says Tara Raghavir, a tenant rights advocate with People's Action. At best, a supply side intervention is going to build housing that shows up in our communities in a couple of years. That doesn't do anything for the millions of tenants who can't afford rent next month. 
wherever there's federal funding for housing, she's pushing the administration to make it harder to evict people without cause and harder to raise rents beyond inflation to prices more and more people simply can't pay. Jennifer Ludden, NPR News. Well, see, you know, that is part of it. You know, look, there's not enough regulation, not enough good policies on the books for renters in some states. Some states, people are fine, but in other states, they're not fine at all. They can get evicted even if they paid on time. I, I started seeing stories like that about a month ago where people were paying their rent, they were on time, but for one reason or another, the landlord still wanted them gone so that they could up the rent and rent out to somebody entirely different. It's not that they did anything wrong, but the policies are not the same from state to state. In some states you have more protection, in other states you don't. And unfortunately, this woman is in Oklahoma. If she did not land a job as quickly as she did, it would have been a bad situation for her and more than likely she and her children would have been out on the streets. Mm, mm, mm. So it's still bad out here, y'all. I hope those of you that are renting, you have decent landlords that if you run into a problem, they'll at least give you a chance and not try to throw you out anyway. But in many instances, that is happening in America. You know, it, it was once upon a time, if you fell on bad times, sometimes, uh, you know, that landlord would work with you until you got back on your feet. Well, that's becoming less and less seen in America. Now it's, it's like, okay, well, you got to go. But y'all, please tell me what you think. You know, I really hate seeing stories like this. You know, something should be worked out. And I said from the beginning that when they were giving stimulus, they should have given some kind of stimulus to landlords in this country so that they would at least have money and not worry about whether their tenant paid or not because it would have been covered but they didn't want to do things like that. And look at where the country is now. You got millions upon millions that are looking at evictions and they have nowhere to go. Homelessness is really getting worse in America with a lot of people on the streets more than ever before. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this video please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.